What you eat only matters if you can get it first. So let's talk about some different strategies primate use to obtain food. Now let's talk about foraging strategies or different ways we can obtain food. First, we want to think about our activity budget. This means how do you allocate your time? How much do you sleep? How long do you have to wait at the grocery store? All of those variables that go into your day. Primates, you know, have slightly different variables. They're not going to a grocery store, but let's compare two different primates here. First, we have our howler monkey. As their name suggests, they howl a lot. They're pretty loud. If you live next to a zoo with howler monkeys, you'll know it. You can see that howler monkeys actually spend a lot of their days resting. Hmm. Do you have an idea what you think their diet might be if they spend a lot of their day resting? If you guessed folivore, you're right. They spend a lot of their time resting because they're sitting there digesting after they've eaten a bunch of leaves. On the other hand, now we have a wakari. So these are both uh, new, new world monkeys or platyrines, but you can see their activity budgets are pretty different. Wakaris don't rest nearly as much and they actually spend a, a larger amount of their time traveling and feeding. Do you remember what wakaris eat? These guys eat a lot of uh, nuts and seeds or unripe fr fruit. Um, so they need to spend a lot of their time traveling and finding that food. Another thing to think about is activity patterns or when this species is active. Some of the most common activity patterns are nocturnal, active at night, diurnal, active at, during the day. Hmm, which one are we? You should know that one. Then we have crepuscular. This means species that are active at twilight, so dawn and dusk. And then cathemeral is just a regular and anything that doesn't fit in the other three categories. Most primates are either nocturnal or diurnal. Do you remember which strepsirines are? Strepsirines are primarily nocturnal and uh, anthropoids are primarily diurnal. Uh, tarsiers, even though we generally talk about them as nocturnal, they're actually active into the twilight hour, so they're active at both dawn and dusk. They have a very wide range of time with which they are active. And that's pretty interesting because that's a lot of different light conditions that they need to be able to deal with. Um, there's some benefits and uh, cons to both of these, all of these strategies. If you're a nocturnal primate, um, you, it's harder for you to have social communication. Um, there's not as much light. Um, and you, it's harder for you to just find anything. However, there aren't as many species active at night. So you have reduced food competition. You don't have to worry about heat stress. Um, there isn't, aren't as many predators, because again, just not as many things are awake. And you actually have increased olfaction. Um, for di diurnal prone, bleh, diurnal primates, they have decreased olfaction and increased predation, and they also have possible heat stress depending on where they are in their environment, and there's just increased competition with other primates, other birds, all of those things. But they do have the benefits of better visual foraging and better visual communication. Let's compare the activity patterns of a couple different species. Here we have a siamang, or a, a small ape, a crab-eating macaque, and a dusky leaf monkey. You can see our spy, siamang, they spend some time calling in the morning. Like our howler monkeys, they make very loud calls in the morning. They are territorial and they're telling other siamangs to stay away. This is mine. But they also spent a lot of their day feeding. Then we also can look at our crab-eating macaque. They spend a decent amount of their time traveling. Um, macaques eat just anything. <laughs> so they need to spend a lot of time traveling to find all the various different things they're going to eat. Our dusky leaf monkey, they spend a decent amount of time feeding and a little bit of time traveling, but notice how much more time they spend resting than our other species. You'll also notice that at different periods of the day, um, species are doing one activity more likely than the other. Related to all these activity patterns is the evolution of vision in primates. Especially in anthropoids, some species have color vision. If you would like to learn more, I highly recommend you read this wonderful article by Jacobs and Nathan about the evolution of color vision in primates. Well, let's talk a little bit more about foraging and some important terms we use to talk about that. 
First, we have day range. This is the area that a population uses in one single day. We can also talk about the home range. So you just take a bunch of different day ranges and you um, overlap them with each other and you see what the total area is used by that population. We also will see a core area. That is the area of the home range that is used the most. And lastly, we might have something called a territory, and that is the area of the home range or core area that is actively defended. Not all species are territorial, however, so it doesn't apply to all primates. But let's look at these with a visual. Here is our day range. You can just map, this is the path this primate took. Now, if we take a bunch of different day ranges, we might end up with something like this. So all of that, that is the home range. But you notice that some of that's used a lot more than the rest, and there is our core area. And if that is defended um, by that population, we would call that a territory. So what are the different foraging strategies?